Welcome to class 13 on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. Uh, in this class, we will be uh, discussing example problems. For the students in the class, it is uh, homework problems. Uh, for the students who are watching the video, I would strongly recommend that you work out the problems before watching the video. So, we will look at uh, first a uh, problem where you have uh, uh, a 66 kV uh, sub transmission line uh, feeding say a substation consisting of two transformers. Uh, you are given the fault, cur fault uh, MVA at the transformer primary 1500 MVA. You are given the x by r ratio for positive sequence and the ratio of the 0 sequence to positive sequence impedance this is 2. Uh, you are given the rating of the transformer it is 10 MVA 66 <coughs> kV slash 11 kV uh, line to line and your leakage inductance is 8 percent uh, each. And the output of the transformers combined to form the low voltage bus at the substation and you have uh, 8 feeders radiating out from the substation each feeder rated at uh, 2 MVA at and 11 kV. So, the first problem is uh, to determine what is the fault current for a three phase fault at the transformer primary. So, you say you have a fault say you have a fault somewhere on the primary or somewhere on the bus primary side bus and you want to evaluate what the fault current is going to be. So, you uh, you are told that your primary voltage is 66 kV and your three phase fault current uh, level is capacity is 1500 MVA and you are given x by r ratio is 4. So, your short circuit current level is 1500 divided by root 3 into 66 uh, is 13.12 kilo amps. So, in the next problem you are asked to uh, draw the sequence network and find the uh, what would happen if you had a single line to ground fault on the substation transformer on the primary side. So, to do this first what you have to do is uh, get the value of the uh, impedances x plus r plus uh, um, and the 0 sequence impedance. So, you have and you are given x plus divided by r plus is 4. So, you have this particular example because your x by r ratio is 4. So, you can then calculate r plus r plus is 0 0.7 ohms x plus is 4 r plus equal to 2.8 ohms 
your z naught is 2 z plus. So, this means that uh, x naught is 5.6 ohms and r naught equal to 1.4 ohms. So, now with this uh, uh, resistance and reactance parameters, you could actually calculate what would be your uh, single line to ground fault current level. So, So, you could calculate your fault current level, the fault current level I f equal to 9.8 kilo amps. So, the next problem is uh, uh, to uh, normalize the system, perunitize the system using the 2 MVA base of the uh, feeder. So, you can calculate your S base, V base as we had discussed earlier in class, your current base is, is 0.105 or 105 amps on the 11 kV side your z base on the primary side. If you then want to transfer parameters from your 66 kV side, uh, the base quantities for the 66 kV side uh, would be your V base or 17.5 amps and your z base is uh, 
2178 ohms. So, so now using the base quantities depending on which side you are normalizing, you can calculate uh, your normalized parameters. So, one the first is for the 66 kV line. and 2.8 ohms corresponds to point corresponds to point 0013 per unit So, you can see that uh, there is a small quantity of impedance that is being added from the 66 kV side. Okay. Then the next thing we can look at is the substation transformer. and the parameters are given in the problem. Your trans transformer rating is Is, uh, is 0.52 kilo amps or 520 amps. So, your Z base is 6.35 by 0.52 is 12.1 ohms. So, your leakage inductance of the transformer which is given as 8 percent this corresponds to 0 0.08 into 12.1. So, this is equal to 0 0.968 ohms. So, on the common base so on the 11 on the 2 MVA base your X L is uh, 0.968 divided by 60.5 which was our common base. So, this is equal to 0 0.016 per unit. So, the third item to look at is the distribution feeder and It is 2 MVA, 11 kV, 4 kilometers long and you are given your impedance of the line is 0.5 ohms plus j 0.5 ohms per kilometer. So, your R plus is equal to 1 ohm for 2 kilometers x plus is 1 ohm for 2 kilometers and 2 ohms for the 4 kilometer so 
So, you have the, uh, the resistances and reactance of the line of the feeder and uh, so these numbers turn out to be on the common basis your R plus 1 ohm corresponds to 0 0.017 per unit and uh, 2 ohms corresponds to 0 0.033 per unit. You are also told that your Z naught divided by Z plus is 3. So, you have R naught equal to 0 0.05 per unit which is also equal to your X naught value for 2 kilometers and 0 0.1 per unit for the 4 kilometer. So, so the next thing the part of the problem is to draw a single line diagram on the common base. So, now that you have all the parts of your problem on a common base you can you can do that. So, you have the source which is 1 per unit you have the uh, your transformer primary bus, you have say breaker, you have the leakages of the transformers, so you have the low voltage bus at the substation, then you have your breakers that uh, protect each feeder then you have the reactance and the resistance of each section of the line. So, your X plus is J point 0 And you could also write your X naught and R naught. So, the, your X naught over here is J 0 0.0026, R naught is 0 So, from here to here is the 6 6 kV line and you have the transformer and then you have the 11 kV line and it's, that is split into two sections of 2 kilometers each. So, now with this single line diagram you can actually calculate your fault, fault current levels what happens when you have faults at different points on the line. So, the question is what are the fault current levels for a three phase and single line to ground fault at the transformer secondary for normal conditions, normal conditions being when uh, both transformers are uh, available at the substation 
and the second case is when one of the one transformers is de-energized maybe for some repairs or maintenance, uh, draw the associated sequence network for these two fault, fault cases. So, uh, we will look at the first case of, uh, of a fault at the transformer secondary when only one transformer is present. So, you have from what you have the single line diagram that you drew, you have 1 per unit source. and you can calculate your fault current level I f is 1 divided by the total impedance so your magnitude of your fault current is 57.8 per unit and that corresponds to 6.1 kilo amps RMS on your uh, this is referred to your uh, secondary side your common base on the secondary side. So, for your single line to ground fault you have when you have a fault on the transformer secondary because your transformer is delta y your leakage impedance path returns the fault current it does not uh, include the impedance on your uh, 6 6 kV side. So, uh, so we will see that uh, the resulting situation uh, you will end up with a higher uh, 0 uh, single line to ground fault current than a 3 phase fault current. and you can write an expression for your fault current level I f S L G. this turns out to be 59.3 per unit. So, this corresponds to 6.2 kilo amps on the secondary side and you can see that the fault current level for the single line to ground fault case is higher than the three phase fault case. And essentially the reason is that uh, this impedance is bypassed because of your delta y transformer configuration. So, you could look at the next case where you have uh, uh, both transformers present I will just write the result for this particular case and uh, I put it in a table. So, you can see that uh, this was what we calculated. Uh, in the example that we did when there was one transformer 
if you have two transformers you can see that the fault current level is almost double and you can still see that uh, the single line to ground uh, case has a higher current. So, if you want to protect say uh, uh, circuit breakers for say a fault occurring on the low voltage bus of the substation you need to rate your system to be able to handle the highest level of fault current which would happen when both transformers are operating in parallel. So, the next question is uh, what are the fault current levels for uh, three phase and single line to ground fault uh, at the transformer sec uh, uh, secondary and uh, th that is what we just calculated and then what happens for faults uh, at the 2 kilometer and 4 kilometer point on the feeder and uh, the procedure for doing this is similar to what we did for the transformer secondary fault. Now, you will have the additional impedances of the remaining sections that uh, you have to include in your fault current calculation and you will have to repeat it for the case when you have one transformer and for the two transformer case. So, I have uh, summarized the results over here in this uh, table. So, you can see that uh, as you go further away from the feeder the fault current level is uh, lower compared to what it was at the uh, secondary side of the transformer because now you have the added feeder impedance. And you can still see that uh, the fault current level for the two transformer case is higher uh, not double, but uh, uh, higher than the case when you had just a single transformer. Okay. And for the faults at the end of the line, you have uh, fault current levels which are lower uh, for the single line to ground fault case, because now when you are looking at a single line to ground fault, you now have the added feeder impedance which is dominating your uh, numbers and reduces the fault current level. So, you can see that uh, there can be a, a, a change in value of fault current levels depending on whether there are two transformers or one transformer at the substation. So, your uh, protection devices should be able to handle a possible range of current levels not just for your single line to ground fault and the three phase fault, but for the situations of maybe switching of transformers or switching of lines uh, which can occur on the system. So, the next question is what would be the uh, rated current and the fault current level of uh, these uh, 8 uh, circuit breakers that are protecting the feeder. Uh, the second part of the question is what would happen if you add a impedance in series with uh, uh, circuit breaker 1 on the 11 on the low voltage bus. So, for the first problem uh, we saw that the transformer secondary fault current level would be the same as the fault current level. So, if a fault is occurring somewhere immediately after the circuit breaker the impedance of this particular section may not be uh, that dominant which means that whatever uh, current that we calculated for this particular point would be similar to the fault current level at this particular point and hence you have to take the worst case and from a previous calculation the worst case corresponds to a, a, a single line to ground fault when two transformers are present. So, you could use that as your worst case uh, in uh, RMS current level for interrupting your uh, your uh, uh, fault on the system uh, just immediately downstream of the substation. So, so you have the rated current of each feeder which is uh, 105 amps. So, that is the 2 MVA power level. So, your breakers has to be rated for continuous current level of uh, 105 amps and fault current level of 11.8 uh, kilo amps. Uh, on a RMS basis. So, then the next part of the problem is what would you what would you happen what would happen if you now 
add if you can if you now add a reactor of uh, 1.5 milli henry in series with the low voltage uh, of the in series with the circuit breaker CB1. So, you can see that essentially adding a reactance over here will now reduce your fault when if you have a fault immediately downstream. So, you could now do the calculations of uh, what would be the fault current level uh, now with the circuit uh, with this particular reactor and you can see that uh, now with the reactor uh, your fault current level with the two transformer case it reduces to about 6.3 kilo amp uh, with one transformer it further reduces, but now compared to the previous case where you had 11.8 kilo amps as the fault current level of circuit breakers uh, 2 through 9 now you have circuit breakers which need to interrupt uh, 6.3 kilo amps. So, uh, you can have situations where say for example, by adding a reactor you could reduce your fault rating of a large number of breakers. So, uh, potentially you can have a situation where uh, the circuit breaker the cost savings in circuit breaker 2 to 2 to 9 might be greater than the cost of the reactor that you are adding. Of course, you will have to look at the voltage regulation by adding that uh, reactor 1.5 milli Henry you should also look at the cost of that inductor and the possibly the losses in introduced by adding such a component. But if it works out to be, be economical you could put now uh, impedances in your circuit to ensure that your fault current level does not become excessive. Okay. So, we are the calculations is done for the three phase and a single line to ground fault uh, case and you can see again at the low voltage bus the single line to ground fault current level is higher and uh, but the current levels are now uh, uh, reduced quite significantly. So, the next uh, question is what would be uh, uh, the effect of adding this re uh, reactance uh, on the balance of the feeder and you can see that uh, now if you look at the case where you have uh, uh, no added in inductance you have higher fault current level with the uh, in uh, with the reactance your fault current level is reduced and uh, one interesting thing that you might note is uh, in the true two transformer case with uh, the reactor you have 2.8 kilo amps and with the one transformer case with no reactor you have the same 2.8 kilo amps. Uh, this is for a mid feeder fault at uh, three phase fault. Similarly, for a single line to ground fault with the reactor when there are two transformers you have 2 kilo amps uh, with no reactor with one transformer for a single line to ground fault you have similar current level. At the end of the feeder again you can see when there are two transformers if you have that reactor you have a, a 1.7 kilo amps without the, uh, the reactor in the one transformer case you have similar current levels uh, for the one transformer and the two transformer case. So, you could now think about a situation where you are potentially adding a reactor so that uh, irrespective of your transformer configuration your effective impedance seen by your feeder is the same irrespective of whether uh, you have different switching in the uh, substation. So, you could have a, a, a poss possible uh, case of having keeping your fault current level the same irrespective of whether you have one transformer or two transformer what you could do is have the reactor when you are operating both the transformers and bypass the reactor when you are de-energizing one of the transformer. So, essentially your eff effective impedance seen uh, of your upstream impedance seen by the feeder stays uh, similar uh, respective of switching that can happen at the substation. So, so in addition to keeping the fault current level uh, the same in uh, in, uh, at a level of uh, about six, uh, 6 kilo amps 
you are now having the same impedance seen irrespective of whether there are two transformers or one transformer. So, uh, a benefit could be that your protection timings would not change irrespective of uh, what is uh, the configuration of the transformer at the substation. So, the next problem is uh, about uh, delta y transformer and your primary voltage is 66 kV. and your secondary voltage is uh, 11 kV on a line to line basis. So, if you look at your uh, secondary which is y, your, uh, your voltage on your winding is 11 divided by root 3. Uh, so, you could calculate, so the first question is to calculate what would be your uh, primary turns if your secondary turns is 24. So, you have the turns ratio your N p is about 249 turns. So, the next problem is then to look at the phase relationship and uh, you would like to uh, label your terminals and uh, arrange your dot points such that uh, your uh, delta leads the y by 90 degrees and uh, you could verify that what you are doing is correct using a phasor diagram. So, first we will just look at a uh, situation where you have the small a 1 and the capital A 1 to correspond to the dot points of uh, the primary and the secondary correspondingly. And if you label your uh, secondary uh, terminals as uh, small r y b, uh, you can uh, draw the phases for your line to line uh, voltage on the primary v r y, v y b and v b r. And we are from your transformer dot points, you know that now your uh, voltage from A 1, uh, A 2 to A 1 is similar to the capital A 2 to A 1. So, V r y is now in phase with V r. Okay. So, you can now draw your V r, V y and V b and then if you look at V r y, the line to line voltage, V r y is now uh, 30 degrees leading V r. So, in this particular case your y side is leading your delta by 30 degrees. So, what we would like to have is uh, delta leading your y by 90 degrees and for that essentially what you would like to do is you could to be desirable to have essentially your v r y brought to a position which is facing in this particular manner. And you could do that if you are say if you shift your v r to this particular location, if you can shift v r to this particular location v y over here and v b to this particular case as what is shown in, in this figure. So, your terminals is now b r y then essentially if you then draw your phasor diagram your uh, v r, v y and v b would be of this particular orientation. Then if you look at v r y, it would be 90 degrees uh, uh, lagging and uh, essentially in this particular case, you will have your, uh, your delta leading your y. So, your delta is, is leading your y by 90 degrees.
So, the next problem is uh, to then uh, uh, relabel uh, label your secondary terminals uh, and the with appropriate dot points so that your y lags your delta by 30 degrees and again verify with uh, appropriate uh, phasor diagram. So, first what we will do is we will label our terminals R y b and change the dot points. Suppose the dot point was at a 2 uh, small a 2 rather than small a 1 and look at what would be the resulting uh, phase relationship at your winding uh, terminals. So, essentially if you are looking at the voltage V r y on your primary side on an oscilloscope and you are looking at your voltage V r b uh, V r b on the secondary side on your oscilloscope essentially what you are trying to do is see what your phase relationship is going to be. And similar to what we did pre previously in this case because now your dot point is exchanged your V r is now oriented 180 degrees away similarly V y and V b. So, then if you draw V r y you can see that your y side is uh, lagging your, your, uh, your delta side by 150 degrees. What you would really like is y side lag delta by 30 degrees and to do that essentially what you could do is you want to bring essentially your <coughs> your V r y to this particular location. So, this is where we would like it to be to meet this particular condition and you could do that by shifting your V r, V y and V b by twice 120 degrees. Okay. So, if you rotate your terminals by twice one, uh, 120 degrees you would be able to do that and that is essentially what is done over here we you relabel your terminals y b and r and then you will have uh, v r located over here v y located over here and v b in this particular direction and you can see that in this particular case your uh, v r y is now uh, uh, your y side is lagging your delta side by 30 degrees okay So, in the next problem we are looking at uh, uh, overhead lines and looking at uh, uh, its uh, resistance and its reactance and you are asked to look at uh, obtain expressions for its reactance and resistance uh, based on its geometric uh, uh, parameters. Okay. So, the expression for the reactance of a uh, overhead line uh, is something that is uh, available from a book on textbook on power systems analysis. We will just uh, briefly uh, go through that and uh, write down the expression. So, so to determine the, uh, the, 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 the reactance of the line you are looking at the inductance, the flux linkage of the line. Uh, so, if you have a round conductor of radius r and you have to look at two cases one is what about the flux linkage within the conductor and the flux linkage outside the conductor. So, we will look at the first case where you are looking at a radius x, x less than r. So, you are looking at uh, the flux linkage within the conductor and say you have a closed path uh, gamma and this is the wire or the conductor and by Ampere's law you have
h dot d l is uh, your current enclosed which is i into x square by r square. So, you can you know that your b is mu naught mu r h. So, you can calculate your total flux linkage within the conductor. And for the flux linkage, you are looking at the current which is within that particular radius x. So, you have to take the actual cu current that links, links with the flux which would be pi x square by pi r square, where i is the current through the conductor. and you would get this as mu naught mu r i by 8 pi. Similarly, you can write an expression for the case when your x is outside the conductor. You have Uh, this is Ampere's law. So, you have H uh, B is mu H and mu is mu naught for air. So, you can then calculate your flux in cage lambda 2. where you are considering a up to a radius r and then we can look at a case where. Uh, uh, so, you can look at the total flux linkage So, this would correspond to the internal plus external. So, this is uh, And the next thing you can look at the case where say you have n conductors where you have I 1 plus I 2 plus up to I n where the current sums to 0 and you can calculate the flux linkage of the conductor. Uh, uh, one conductor due to the total current that is being carried by uh, all the different conductors. So, you get uh,
So, uh, so we then you could simplify the case for two conductors where you have one taking the current forward and one returning the current. You can calculate the flux linkage uh, again assuming that you are taking a distance uh, the calculating the flux up to a distance r which is quite large compared to the dis distance between the conductors you get an expression lambda 1 is and uh, I 2 is minus I 1. So, you can calculate uh, your lambda 1 is L 1 I 1 and your X L is 2 pi 50 times L. So, you can write an expression for X L. So, you are taking mu r to be equal to 1 uh, for the conductor for aluminum and uh, copper it is close to 1 and, uh, and you can write an expression for your uh, uh, reactance of the line uh, based on its geometric parameters okay. and mu naught So, you get uh, expression x l So, if you express it in terms of milli ohms per kilometer, you milli ohms per kilometer has a 10 is 10 to the power of minus 6. So, you get something uh, such as 15.7 milli ohms per kilometer plus 144 log. here this is log to base 10 of d by r. So, essentially yeah, log to natural logarithm to log to base 10 can be written as. So, you can substitute for that you will get these numbers. So, you can verify now you have an expression for the reactance of the line in terms of its geometry, its diameter and uh, its uh, distance between the conductors. Okay. So, the next expression is to look at the resistance of the line and here the expression is quite straightforward. You can look at the resistivity of the conductor. So, have resistance is rho by A, where this is in ohms per unit length. And rho for copper is ohms for mm square per meter and rho aluminum.
again this is at uh, uh, 20 degrees centigrade uh, your resistivity would be a function of temperature okay. and so you can write your resistance say of a copper conductor now in ohms per kilometer by your area which is 4 by pi into diameter square where this is diameter square. Uh, so, that is the essentially the occupied area of the wire. So, even if it is a round conductor you put it on a cable tray it will take some occupy some area and similarly you can calculate your R for your aluminum conductor is 34 by S ohms per kilometer. So, now you have your resistance and uh, reactance of the line for per on a per unit distance basis and you can make use of that to look at what your x by r uh, ratios would be. We will do this and wrap up the example problems in the next class. Okay, thank you.